Okay, hi everyone. This is Ron McKinney with Parida Photo. Um, I'm happy to be here today with Jingzi Zhao. She's in Portland, Oregon. We're going to be talking a lot about, you know, really getting outside the box, you know, with your photo shoots. Um, uh, Jingzi, uh, uh, in our 2022 uh, Parida Dance uh, Photo Competition, came in first place in studio and also took third place too. And she's been a finalist in our grand prize category the last two years as well. So uh, I'd love to turn things over to Jing Z now. And I, Jing Z, I'd love you to just kind of like, like tell a little bit more about your background, how you got started in photography and the journey that you took and, um, and how you got into dance photography and got, got you to where you are now. Sure, thanks Ron. Uh, hi everyone. Um, so I, Photography is my second career. I'm, I was tired of my corporate job. So I quit my job and moved down to Argentina uh, to study Spanish and, start, and learning to dance tango. So I started taking photographs basically of my tango friends and they did turn out pretty good. So I was like, oh, maybe I can be a photographer since I don't know what to do next. So I did become a photographer, but I didn't do dance photography right away. It took me another seven years and it took another trip, another stay uh, uh, in Buenos Aires. Um, when this, the, 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 by, by then, that's my third time living there. Um, I took a stage photography workshop. That's actually very interesting. I don't think we have something like that in the States. So during the stage photography workshop, we actually get to go to different theaters to to photograph the rehearsals there. And some of them were like a live production. We got to sit back, you know, and doing that. So I got to photograph plays, musicals, and also my first ever real dance performance. That's with uh, Bali San Martin. It was, uh, even to this date, I would say it was, you know, memorable experience. Um, I really, really love it. I really, really love photographing, um, performing arts. Mm -hmm. At that moment, I realized that. So after we returned to the States, um, but I didn't start doing that right away again, you know? <laughs> so I was uh, inspired by uh, Jordan Matters work, you know, Dancers Among Us. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this is so cool. So I, for a couple of years, I worked on my own project called Fuse Poland Dance Portraits. I worked on that for two years and I had a few uh, exhibits from it. And then in the meantime, I was also uh, photographing dress rehearsals for dance companies. After a while, it, you know, it, it, it's, it's great. Um, but after a while, I feel like I don't have you know, when you photograph dress rehearsals, you are mostly capture. Mm -hmm. So, but I don't get to, I want more control. I want to create, not just to capture. I don't want, because when you photograph dress rehearsal, it's basically dancers make the photo. Of course, you know, you have the timing, you have to make sure you click the right timing, all these things, but still mostly dancers make the photo. But I wanted to make the photo, right? <laughs> so, um, I, it's 2000, yeah, 2019, which is exactly, exactly three years ago, the summer of 2019, right before pandemic, um, I took a workshop with Rachel Neville in LA uh, about the studio photography, you know, dance, capture dancers in studio. So I got really inspired and I decided to run with it. And then of course I hit pandemic, <laughs> but actually that doesn't matter, you know, pandemic was fine. I, you know, I, I kept creating work um, so that in the last three years, my main focus uh, was creating dance photographs in studio with, with lights. Mm -hmm. So this is how I got into photography and how I got into dance photography in a nutshell. No, yeah, that's cool. That's really interesting. Um, so you know, what we want to do now is uh, just kind of like, let's, let's start off with uh, showing your images uh, that took first and third in the, uh, in the studio category in our competition. And kind of like, tell us like, uh, what led you into 
making these particular shots and your decisions on lighting and, and things like that. So if you want to go ahead and share your screen now. Sure. Oh, and while she's doing that, I want to let everyone know that um, if you have like questions, go ahead and, and uh, post the questions into the chat and, um, and, um, and I will uh, be able to see the questions and, 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 and share them uh, with Jing Z. Uh, be sure you set it so it it uh, it is uh, set to panelists and attendees or everyone or whatever it may be. Um, so so everyone can see you know what your uh, what what your questions are. So this is the image that took uh, first place in the uh, photo competition. So you know obviously I mean this is amazing. Can you can you tell us about it and uh, how you came up with it? Who the dancers are? Yes, uh, the dancers, uh, Brian Simcoe and the Xuan Chen from Oregon Ballet Theater, they are the prin principal dancers. Um, I invite them over to do something pretty specifically. I was, I approached them saying that I wanna do some part of the partner work. Uh, we did some single you know, shots as well with individuals, but the main focus uh, was doing partnering work. And I'm not a choreographer, but when I work with dancers, I, I provide the perspective from like a photographer's perspective. So we talked about how we are going to occupy the frame. So in my mind, I was saying that, okay, if someone wanted to be high, then I want somewhere, someone to be low. And then if someone, wanted to do something expensive, I want another person probably do something more with like, like more contraction. So the energy is expansion, contractions, so there's contrast. Um, and uh, how we got to this image is actually, I was telling them a story. I was like, oh, we tried different scenarios. I think this is the second story we, we were trying. Um, we were talking about, Imagine it's the hawk and the bunny. Um, so <laughs> the hawk is flying, you know, hovering over and chasing after bunny. And then, you know, I said to Xuan, I said, you know, you can choose, you know, it's pretty obvious the hawk energy is, you know, what a hawk energy would be. But a bunny can be, you know, submissive or not be scared or can be defiant, you know, it's just, just, you know, how, so that's all I was saying to them, um, but that provide a context so they can come up with the movement. Um, again, they're the principal dancers. So it's, they, they really good at that. Right. And so they came up with this overall, this kind of shape, you know, Brian is doing a jump and then, uh, Shen is uh, doing, uh, yeah. So the we did a, we made a few adjustments. Um, so Brian, it looks the illusion is like as if he's right on top. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's not the case. If that's the case, then he will be, you know, when he land, he will crush her. <laughs> so we did not want to happen. So he is actually only slightly behind her. Mm -hmm. We actually tried a different, you know, put him first, but that would not work out because for someone jumping, you are already dynamic. When you're dynamic, you're already dominant in a frame. So you don't want to put someone so dynamic unless you intentionally want to do that. So um, I put Shen slightly in front so that, you know, she can also be prominent. She mm -hmm. really shared a frame. Yeah. And, and, and like when they, they like demonstrated, like, like, like work this out about how they're going to do it. And then from there, is that when you start making your like lighting decisions, because your lighting here is, I mean, obviously they're doing a great job with what they're doing, but your lighting right. here is what really takes this image to another level. Um, it's, uh, I, in general, I like the drama. So I don't like to light everything. Um, 
for this one, I choose to cite it uh, mostly because, you know, Xuan's pose is very symmetrical. And then I think less light create more tension. So I only need to, for me, I feel like I only need to bring the focus to the outline and that's, that will do it. So I choose to, so basically the two long strip lights on both sides, either side, it's a 90 degree from me. Does that make sense? So yeah. if I'm, if, yeah. So um, JL has a question and, and, and uh, he's a graphic designer. So he likes the use of space and, and he, he notices there's a lot of negative space in here. And he's, he's curious whether that's an artistic decision or if you are shooting like that to accommodate different layouts or you know, different type of crops that you might use. Um, it depends. Mostly I like to frame in camera. Uh, because I just can't help it. Um, however, later on in post, I learned lesson that I sometimes have to give a bit more because sometimes the light stand, the legs of the light stand creeped in and later on I have to do something about it. So then I realize, oh, you know, um, if, if I cropped really too tight, uh, when I see it at a moment and then later on, it may create, it just create more trouble for myself in post mm. when I have to clean up some of the clutters in the studio. Um, so nowadays I'm a bit more generous. So in terms of the composition wise, I will compose however I want to compose. Then all around, I leave a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So in the post, if there's something, you know, this part I have to, Crone it out, you know, something then I, I can do so. And, and then I still have a little bit more cushion. So yeah. yeah. But overall, I I really like to I really like to just take the photo how I see it, yeah. not to yeah, do the other way. And, and then you can see uh, the, the shadows of the dancers coming towards the camera. And, and Patrick is asking this question. You know, are the lights farther back, um, uh, farther back, like closer to the background? Um, the lighting actually, uh, they are both silent. So they will be, I'm just trying to look at it because they actually a little bit behind them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, that's what creates that nice room lighting, you know, especially on the, the dancer down right. below. Right, they are a little bit behind them. It's not like they are right in line. With, and they and also they are on grid, as I recall, if correctly. Yeah, and I, I want to remind everyone that, that uh, Jinzi and I um, did a, um, a, a more extended like um, webinar on her background that focused a lot more on these images uh, even though we're going to go over them today, we're, you know, uh, we went over more extensively and you can find that on potadufoto.com and our education page. We have, you know, her webinar, you know, plus uh, many others. So let's go ahead and move to the second um, picture from um, the photo competition. Um, Noel's asking how large is your space for this image? And I think what he's asking, correct me if I'm wrong, Noel, but He's asking how big is your, your studio space that you use this? You know, are, is, uh, are you using like a paper backdrop that's like 12 no, feet wide? No, it's the You can actually tell from this second page, the second image. It's, a, it's those kind of CYC wall, but then it's on both sides. It's one side and then another like that. Yeah, I mean, but how so, big is that though? How much space? Uh, I would say like the width is about 16 feet. Okay. Yeah, it's, a, it's not very wide. And then if anything, in the nowadays, I often feel like uh, it's, uh, it just creates lots of problems in post because um, on one side, especially on one side, they have another wall 
you know, uh -huh. you can see from these pictures, you know, come around. So when you put light stands on this side, especially when you want to put it like behind dancers, eventually, you know, always the way I do it, always I have to crop, not crop, you know, kind of remove the partially the light stand in the post, which I really hate <laughs> because they're just in a frame, like, yeah. And, and, and JL 16, you know, yeah, I know it's, it's not very wide, but sometimes we like to go much wider than that. So I, I, JL yeah, makes a comment it's, because, you know, it's some not, of us know we're limited. Very wide. Maybe. We're limited to that white paper backdrop, you know, some of us where it's only 12 feet wide. So 16 is awesome. You know, he's saying, yeah, I, I only have nine foot. So let's go ahead and talk about this image now, because this is really interesting, you know, about how you did the lighting here. And, and then we can show that. That, that behind the scenes video that you have as well that kind of really shows it. Okay, so how I came up with this image is um, um, I, I saw this uh, technique from a fashion photographer. And uh, what he did is um, he created this kind of sliver of light and using two V flats. Um, he did a, this, you know, the fashion model shoot, the models posing and they're just standing there not moving. Um, whenever I see something interesting, I always think like, what, how, how can I apply it to what I do? So I'm like, oh, that's very interesting because I'm always interested in like using light to create some, like create a scenario, create something like I can create something from it. So. <laughs> Um, so that's what we did. We used two V-flats and then they are very close together. At the beginning, I only put one light, um, then it's very dark. So all you see will be whatever let in that bit light. Mm -hmm. But then here, this is no light. Right. So then I added another light exactly the same position, but I will say, I forgot, two stop, two stop lower, something like that. Mm -hmm. And higher, a little higher. So it can come in, fill in from, you can see where the V, v flats end. You know, I didn't, you know, edit it. So it's just how it is. Mm -hmm. So it can fill in, get some of the ambient, so that it won't be pitch dark. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then I was shooting back to the composition and the question earlier, I was actually shooting um, to the right side of the dancers. Yeah, I was shooting low because I, I don't want it to, I want to, it, it's, it's as if, you know, you are getting a glimpse of something. You will, don't want to be, I, I do not want to be the one that he's performing to me. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Yep. So, yeah. Cool. Well, why, why don't you go ahead and play that video? So you have to turn off the okay. screen and switch it over to the other one, I think. Okay. Okay, can everyone yep, see this? We can see it now. All right, so it's pretty short. So <laughs> pay attention if you want to see anything. And his name is Brent Rubert, by the way. I, I think that's, that's it. Yeah, you, you can just see how I, I just love how, how creative, like, like, like it's one thing to use light and then you just think of all these other ways that you can like uh, control the light and make it do different things. And just creating that sliver there of light is just fascinating to me. I love it. And also I wanna add that um, because the sliver of light, um, again, it is about, for me, it's about creating this uh, a bit tension. Mm -hmm. So how I how I envision the you know the movement is 
it's not going to be, I, I don't want him to do a grand shut day there. It just doesn't fit. So how I tell him is, I said, imagining yourself in escape room. You only have one chance to escape. And then you see something opening up, you know? So that kind of, I think it's really important to give something to the dancers so they can improvise. Yeah. I have people coming to me to say that, you know, you know, sometimes we work with photographers because we, we know, we all know dancers are fascinating subjects. So we, we just naturally gravitate towards them. We, we want to photograph them. But what you don't want to do is like, you have a camera waiting, like do something. And <laughs> you're like, oh God, there's millions of possibility. What do you want me to do, you know? Okay. And then they feel at lost. And then even when they do something, they don't feel like they own it. They don't, they don't have the expressiveness and it doesn't come out nicely. So tell them something, you know, whatever, you know, it doesn't, I'm, I'm not a professional dancer, so I don't want to dictate. I, you know, even if I think I'm a professional dancer, unless it's through audition shop, I don't think I wanted to dictate the specific movement, you know? So yeah, give, provide them some context, you know, so they can, they can work on. So go, go ahead and unshare it now. Okay. And, and- um, Go back to share the-, well, the yeah, well, we'll, we'll get there in just a minute. Okay. Um, so, so I, you know, like what you just described there and, and we heard you talk about, you know, like, like uh, how you worked with the other dancers as well. And you, and you kind of create this scenario with them for them to act out, which is really, really interesting. Uh, we, we, of course, go over that in more detail in that other webinar. Um, um, but that, that's what's, that, that's just like a really interesting way of working. And I, I can imagine how helpful that is for dancers. So, you know, kudos to you for coming up with that, you know, idea of creating stories, you know, for them to uh, work with. Um, let's go ahead now and bring that, the, the next one up, because now we're going to like really, I mean, this is, you know, what we're talking about um, is, uh, is uh, a cool, I, I agree, Patrick, that's a great idea. Um, but, but, you know, I, I, I want to talk about like what you're talking about, about going outside the box. In fact, before we open it up, before we share it, why don't you just okay. talk to everyone about this concept of, um, of why you're doing what you're doing. In other words, you know, just getting outside the box. Okay. Um, so I think, you know, for, from business perspective, as photographers, we often feel like we need to um, productize what we do. So we say that, oh, we do senior portrait, we do family photos, we do uh, photos for models, we do uh, editorial portraits, but then, uh, editorial portraits could be a variety of things. Um, but then over time, it, it, it's good, it's efficient, then you, so you can uh, target customers better, you know, all these things, so people know what exactly you, you can do. Um, but then over time, it's it's creating, I, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like over time, I feel like I'm boxing myself. And uh, it's not as good for creative growth. So when we do, audition photos, um, help dancers to take audition photos. The focus is entirely different. Mm -hmm. You know, the focus is about make sure to capture the best lines, make sure to showcase that they got the good techniques. Um, when that's a priority, it leaves us little room to be playful. And also for those audition photos, actually they don't expect, you may actually, let me take it back, you can throw in uh, one or two photos to show you know, your personality, That's, that is actually true. Um, and also when we work with younger dancers, um, I think you guys are going to agree with me that the tendency is younger dancers, especially teenagers, 
most time they care about getting their legs higher, doing splits, doing things really like impressive, like, wow, you know, oh, you know, um, great, you know, good for them. They work hard on that. They have such dynamic range, but I, when I, but that doesn't necessarily do a lot for me uh, in terms of make me feel like, you know, satisfied uh, creativity wise. So I feel is what we, the, the reason I, I, so whenever I feel like I kind of, you know, I'm looking at my photographs and I feel like, oh, I've done great and the business good. I'm doing these, 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 you know, but then I was looking at all those photographs I'm thinking about, I have to keep reminding myself what I love about dance. Actually, I, I love to dance way longer than I started doing dance photography. So what I love about dance is how dance make me feel. Mm-hmm. It's not just about how it looks. Right. It's not about legs going higher. And it's about emotions. It's about um, the stories. It's about the drama. So I never want to lose sight of that. And then if I let go of these things, then I feel like, why am I even doing this? For me, it's, you know, what I love about dance should be driving how I do dance photography. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's my no my I, I, I i agree you know like along with like trying to be impressive you know the teens you, you know the other side that i see with the teens is that they they're so focused on being technically correct that that's what they're that's what they're trying to do you can see it in their face i'm really working to be sure everything is absolutely perfect and they're missing the emotional quality and that's what i love about like what you bring into this is that you you help them come up with a story that that gives them emotion that goes with that and that's all that to me that's that's a missing piece with uh with the younger dancers is that they forget that it's actually theater it's 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 not just okay here is an arabesque let me just do it and it's perfect okay good but let's take it beyond that you know and, and give it more of an emotional quality to it yeah i usually add this towards the end of the session so they get, you know, what they have, <laughs> what they want it. And then, then they usually don't even think that they have that. Um, but then if, it depends on the dancers. It, it, it actually really depends on dancers. Um, and, and, and also, especially younger dancers, they actually really need lots of help to, to um, yeah, in, in that do, regard. Do you photograph so, a lot of teen dancers? I I wouldn't say that's the majority of my business. More of yours are more adult professional dancers. Yeah, I work. I would say I still work more with company than individuals. I would say yeah. like sixty and forty, something yeah. like that. Okay, when, when you are dealing with uh, teens, uh, JL is asking a question, and and he's saying that you know like. Uh, um, a, a lot of the kids come up with an idea and they say they want to try this pose, this pose, this pose. And it's really just about like uh, whatever the popular poses are, if you will, you know, on Instagram or whatever. Do you, do you, do you get a sense of that as well? or what do you Totally, think? totally. Uh, so that's why I was, you know, usually I, after they booked me, I would, the first thing I say to them that I said, it's, it's okay to use Instagram for inspiration, but everybody is different. Mm-hmm. And, you know, achieving the exact pose should not be your goal. And also, do you really just want to be like everyone else? So I will usually encourage them to find a pose they really like. Well, because what I like is they come in, they, they come here knowing what they want to do. Because it, I, it doesn't take, you know, usually we don't have much time to like in the studio say, oh, get to know you, let's have a chat. You know, what do we do? You know, we don't have the time. So I want them to come to the studio knowing what they want to do. But then I will make suggestions. And also what I usually encourage them to do is if they find a pose they're really crazy about, see what they can change from it, whether it's arm, whether it's their head positions, you know, there's something they can change it and make them own. 
Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm talking about? So make it their own post instead of just the Instagram post. Yep. Okay, let's go ahead and, uh, and uh, share your screen again. And let's start talking about these uh, new images that you've been coming up with. And while we do that, Corinne uh, has a question about what, what is your go-to lens in the studio? Um, okay, my go-to lens, I'm always the 7200 person. Mm -hmm. But the studio I shoot at, it's um, it, the, the depth sometimes is an issue. So if I shoot two dancers, I have to go, uh, I have to do 24 and 70. Um, yeah. So my go to is 70 to 200. But then I would say half of the time I shoot with 24 and 70 yep. lens. Yep, that makes sense. Okay, so let's go on to the next image now. Uh, okay, so as I mentioned, I'm, I'm the kind of person like drama. So I, what I've been working on is being very stingy with light and only light when I have to. Um, the, the, the reason for that is actually, if you actually, I talked to Ron about that yesterday is when you go to theaters, um, I don't know if you guys, you know, go to theaters, watch lots of dance performances, but um, I do. I love watching dance performances. And uh, if you recall, in the, those dance performances, or if you photograph the dance recitals, come home looking at those images, you will see. I would say 90% of the time, they don't have the, you know, the photographs of the, the dance recitals they all have lots of uh, shadows and lots of colors mm -hmm. and lots of contrast. And uh, most of the time, you know, they are not like a front lit and then like just well lit. They're not like that because in the theater, it's about drama. Mm -hmm. And when I actually had a lunch with, um, we have this lighting designer, um, the Oregon Valley Theater used and I had lunch with him. And then I was asking him, you know, what's your lighting? You know, how do you decide your lighting strategy? And he said, you know, the first thing I think is not about where I put light. The first thing I think about what's the mood? Mm -hmm. What's the mood of that piece? That totally makes sense. So when I have a photo shoot, as long as it's not audition photo shoot, <laughs> I treat it as a performance. I want to just, I want to set the stage. So, so they, you know, so we together can create a drama. And uh, so, yeah, so I, I want to show this photo um, because this photo is a good example about, um, I could light her a lot more, but I didn't. And, uh, I like how it turned out. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, so um, let me see. And Daphne, I, I really love what you're saying there. I totally agree with what you're saying. Uh, she's saying mimicking the masses is a factor in turn, you know, like in coming with poses. And so she just uses the, that as like a tool to help understand what, what they're wanting to achieve. No, I, I kind of feel like lighting designers are, are pretty amazing. You know, it really depends on what they have to work with. I, I don't always, uh, I, don't, I don't really disagree with your, with, with that they're, they're an arch nemesis because sometimes they come up with just amazing stuff when they're coming up with uh, moody pieces. Um, yeah, and I, I, I agree. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes those LEDs can uh, work against us. Totally agree with that. I've actually shot with some that were, where they, they did projection in the back and that was really a mess. Um, okay, so right. let's, let's move on. Um, um, is there anything else you want to talk about with this image here? I just, I just love this no. whole pose and the energy that comes with it and the lighting that just adds to everything. How you use the rim light to just you, so you can see her entire body and the motion in it. Yeah. Um... I'm good, unless there's more questions on this particular image, we can move on. Well, I, I, we do have one question from JL, and, and that is, how many shots did it take to get the light perfect on her face the way that it is? 
Actually, this one, uh, okay, this is the downside of, about being stingy about lights because uh, you don't have much room for error and especially they're moving. So she's moving. Um, I asked her to move slowly like a Tai Chi. Um, mm. So very deliberate, move slowly. And uh, so this is not a pose. So this is something I, because you know, when you work with different dancers, you have a different approach. Uh, she's a contemporary dancer. She's an amazing, uh, Colleen Laverde, that's her name. Um, she's an amazing contemporary dancer. So for contemporary dancers, sometimes it's harder for them to pose. Then the posing, it doesn't really, the, the, yeah, the photos from posing doesn't not necessarily do them justice. So she slowly, uh, when she was moving, she's slowly moving to this. Um, I milked it. So I was waiting for the last, right before she, she had to, you know, <laughs> she had to, yeah put down a, a foot to, to sustain herself, otherwise she'll be falling. Um, so this one, because, you know, two, two, uh, two lights, it's on grid, but they are not, they're behind her. They are a lot more behind her uh, because I only want a sliver of lights to outline her. What's harder is the one on her face. Yep. So um, this one actually, is good, but the earlier there were a couple of photos that her face was not lit well. Right. So that is something like to to keep in mind that um, you have to kind of adjust, especially when they are moving, they're not posing. You have to keep reminding them. But the good thing they are already dancing. So do you, you you say to them they just come tiny little bit forward, so they just move towards the, you know yeah, yeah. frame. So. Okay, let's let's move over to the next one. The next one is really like uh, to me. It's it's like one of the best samples of what it's like, you know, when you're working with, you know, lights on stage. Because that's I kind of think like if I recall correctly, you kind of mimic that there with the lighting that you used here. Yeah, I I did a mimic. <laughs> I I get to be my own lighting designer. So um, yeah, she. Her, she, her name is Jean, and then she's a dancer for a Northwest Dance Project. Uh, we actually did a, uh, we did a, we planned a costume, we planned everything. So she found this beautiful green dress, and then I was like, oh, you know, if it's a green dress, let's do something opposite. So we picked a, I know I want to do something with color. So we picked the, the red color. So where what you see is, um, you know, it's kind of on stage, you know, you have this spotlight effect. So we had a two spotlight. Um, those are achieved by with uh, those uh, optical snoot. Do you, do you um, have that snoot there with you like you did yesterday? Yeah. Because I, I know people will want to see what it is that you use. So and then those things have a place where you can put in like a gel. Is that correct? Yeah. So they also have a lens attachment. So in front of lens attachment, you can put a gel. Yeah. So there are lots of different brands. The one I got is from Westcott. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, so this shot is, uh, was lit by two snoots. Uh, one creates this, uh, spotlight you can see the light pattern you know the, the white on the ground so that's that's the one to partially light her dress i did not want her to light every all her dress and then, then the other part is on the opposite side to light her arm and the head mm -hmm. and um yeah i i i i enjoyed it you know, I enjoy this um, because I was uh, after I finished the, the photo, I was like, oh, you know, this one looks like it's a it's a capture from rehearsal, but it's not, you know, I get to be the lighting designer. So I just feel like, you know, photographer, we paint with light. So in the session, we are the lighting designer, you know, <laughs> I love that. OK, let's let's move on to the next one. Um, 
lately I've been uh, doing a lot of uh, uh, experimenting with a uh, long exposure. And uh, what I wanted to, the, the reason I wanted to do that is uh, we always have this notion that, oh, you know, dance photography is about to capture, you know, the split of second, the, the peak motion. And so I find I, I, you know, for a long time, I was thinking about the split of second. But then when I wanted to, and then, you know, now there's lots of, you know, there's also a dance for film, right? So if you look at like a dancing on film versus dancing on photograph, they're very different. For us, photographer, we only have one frame mm -hmm. and we need to get everything in, telling the story with one frame. While dancing on film, they have lots of, you know, it's a film, they have before and after, they have lots of moment continuously to tell the story. So our job is really hard. Um, so I kind of envy that they get more time to tell the story. <laughs> Um, so that was thinking, I actually also can have more time to tell a story. No one said that exposure can only be this for a second. Mm -hmm. So this photo is, uh, this is probably two seconds or three seconds. Yeah. Um, so it's, uh, there's one strobe and one available light. I actually have a, have a behind the scene for that if you guys want to just see it. Yeah, yeah, if you have that, that would be awesome. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing this one and bring back the other one. Okay, can can you see? Yep. yep, we can see it now. Okay, she was doing a different pose, but then you will see how it all comes together. Yeah, you see the effect. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah, definitely. I'll switch back to the other screen then. Okay. That didn't seem like. Uh, the continuous lighting that you had with, you know, just like you never know with the exposure or whatever, but it didn't look that that bright there. I mean, obviously we can see the shadows, so it is, you know, somewhat bright. What, what kind of light was it that you were using for, for the continuous? <laughs> um, it's not complicated. It's just the modeling light. Of oh, the it's just a modeling light. light. Okay, okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. What, um, what, what kind of, are, are you using Westcott lights or? No, uh, I used uh, the, the the Profoto. The, oh, okay. the the thing is, um, it's not a it's not LED, so it's those uh, halogen light, the 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 bulb, and I didn't put in any correction gel onto it. I did not think of that. But yeah. in retrospect, I actually like it because what happened is the morning light is a bit warm. Mm -hmm. It's much warmer than the strobe. Mm -hmm. So it actually creates two different um, temperature, yeah. which I personally like that because that actually sets two different states. They kind of mm -hmm. differentiate each other. So in this photo, I like the fact that she, uh, when the strobe hits, she's a little bit bluish, you know, mm -hmm. and then it's cold, cooler. And then the other one, she is... Uh, She's warmer. Yeah, it's also kind of interesting because she looks much bigger, you know, on, on the second one with the continuous light. And that just kind of like gives it like an interesting perspective as well. Like the whole, all the differences that you're talking about, it's, it's sort of like when you see them on stage, you know, because in one part of the stage, the light's gonna be one way and another part of the stage, it's gonna be another way. And, and for this one, it's the same going back to what I was saying earlier about how we choose to occupy the frame. Because again, photographers, I feel like um, 
when we direct the dancers, you can you truly can direct the dancers. Don't think because you don't, you know, you're not professional photographers, you feel like you know, you can because visually you you are the visual artist. Um what I am saying to them is since we're gonna have two imprints, right? Mm -hmm. So if both are expensive, it will be tricky to see because they can interfere with each other. Right. And also it's it's like choreography. If every moment is about dynamic movement, then you don't see any dynamic. It just get lost. So you want to contrast. So again, I was saying like, if you do some, one thing a little bit dynamic, expensive, another one, chill, more muted. So that's exactly what we're saying. So that's why this one, she, the, you know, the one with stroke, she did very little, but it's, you know, the, the grace of her, it's very, <laughs> just, I, yeah. And then I like the, the, uh, the one she's shuffling the skirt that way um that one is and also it, there's a little bit overlap so it looks like all blended in yeah and, and this uh, lynn this is done in camera it's like a two to three second exposure with the strobe first and then and then the ending poses at the end of the uh, uh of the shot um patrick snook is asking about um with the strobe he can see that there's fill light and and where that's from is you're you're letting in a lot of ambient light which you need to because you know that's part of the shot here so um the strobe is one part there's ambient light that's filling the left side of her face um yeah daphne says it's amazing she loves it <laughs> <sighs> okay so let's move over to the next shot which is kind of you know along the same lines it's really another this is really another one that's really interesting it's not the same as the last one it's different so um, why don't you go ahead and, and the, the describe this one here? Uh, this one again is a long exposure that's actually happening in the same session. Um, we experimented with uh, one strobe and then, then another is available light. Then we're like, oh, you know, what if we just, no one said you can only, you know, flash once in one exposure, right? Mm -hmm. So when you decouple those things, when you just free up your mind thinking about, okay, when I take one photos, only flash can only have flash once, then you open up so many possibilities. So, um, so this one is we flash it twice. And uh, um, again, the first one is contractions because we, we have to think about the composition prehand before before it happens, so that it, because it, the effect essentially is like a double exposure. Uh -huh. So you want you you want to make sure that they don't get on top of each other. They cannot see anything, right? So again, if contractions lower, then we get to do expansion a little higher. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So that you can see each a little clear, and then you have something overlap then it's more interesting. So uh, we did this, uh, uh, so yeah, she, they did first, they they were you know on their knees and she improvised. I love how she did it. She, you know, used her hand to grab, you know, uh, Brian's chain. It just, it just, just these kind of little things, you know, just, yeah, the artistry of a dancer, right? <laughs> and then, for the next one, they basically did a lift, but they didn't do, they did not overkill it. You know, it's a, yeah. Yeah, and Patrick, Patrick makes a good point here where it's, it's like when they're down lower, it's almost like they're looking up, you know, at their, at their future selves, which is really kind of interesting. That, that's what I wanted to do. You know, everyone, however you think this, however you imagine is, how you imagine that's great <laughs> at least you imagine something um that's actually what i really want to do is when people are looking at a dance photo um they can pause for a second and think about you know a bit so i want to leave room for imagination yeah 
you, you know, and I just, the thing I love most about all these pictures that you're showing us is that it, it's just not just a traditional shot. The, the, it, everything here is going outside the box in all these different directions, you know? And I just, uh, you know, I just find that really fascinating, you know, you, you know, like, like, like your mind, the, the creativity inside your mind is uh, really amazing, Jing Z. And I, I just love how it comes out in all these different ways. Well, thanks, Ron. I, I, I do don't think I'm, a, I'm that creative person. It's just, um, I, I think I get bored easily. And also, I, I, I think it's just, for me, it's like a, how I love dance is how I wanted to do dance photography. And uh, yeah. <laughs> so any question about uh, specific lightings on this one? Well, Noel's asking about the residual shadows on the standing, um, on the standing one. Um, he's, he's wondering about the strobes lighting up the dancers contiguously. But, you know, I, I guess my question is, um, is it the exact same lighting on both of them? In other words, it, they, were, they were just fired twice or is, is it one light, you know, over on camera left and then one light camera right? Or how exactly, well, I guess you can see a camera left on, on his body on the second image, on the standing up image. Is that correct? Is it both, yeah, both, lights, I, both times? Yeah, I wish we had a behind scene because, but we didn't because uh, my, my assistant was busy firing the shots for me because um he, so what happened is i was uh i was on tripod and then um he filed the second one for me okay um so we actually did okay this is what we did so the one they need kneel down we did that first with snoot so only the top of their body is a uh, is lit with mm -hmm. a snoot and at the meantime there is available light on the uh on the stage right which is to their no wait a second to their right yeah yeah, yeah so um then because they need time from that contraction to the lift right so when they get to the lift, my assistant fired the second one, the strobe, which is on the stage left. Okay. Okay, cool. So they are not fired at the same time. Yeah, yeah. That's what makes it so interesting is it, it, it it's like you're doing, you know, different lighting for each of the, each of the shots. And it just, it's mm -hmm. just so fascinating. Okay, um, I think we still have time to do like uh, maybe one more image. Okay, so this one, this one is um, another long exposure. It's not too long, it's two seconds. Um, again, I'm, I'm just talking about my personal taste. I, I, I'm, some of you probably have seen this, uh, this whole like a strobe, stroboscopic effect. Uh, be, be, um, be, before we go in, into this too much, uh, what, what was the uh, exposure? Daphne was asking what the exposure was on the previous one. What, was it like four seconds? Uh, this, this one is three seconds. Three seconds, okay. Okay, let's go back to the other one now. Okay. So this one is uh, two seconds. Uh, the strobes, stroboscopic uh, thing is about you do multiple flash, like throughout exposure. Um, again, I was very interested in, the, in this technique. And then also I'm thinking about how, I, how it can apply to what I do. Actually, you know, their, their photographers have done quite a bit of work in, with dancers with stroke, stroboscopic you know, effect. But I always wonder how I can change it a different. <laughs> uh -huh. So the first thing I did is, uh, the one I've seen is each flash is different. Uh, that is the same exposure. It's the same uh, 
um, same amount of light output. Mm -hmm. That depends on what kind of motion you want to capture. If you want to capture uh, uh, Richard, Richard, um, what's his last name? He he did the. I'm sure you know him, Richard. Mm -hmm. He did this amazing. You you've seen that, right? He does this amazing um, photograph with the dancers. Basically, it's really just just beautiful. That that would color great. Um, for me, in that photo shoot, I had a contemporary dancers. I don't particularly that would work out for this kind of a very systematic and a asymmetrical thing. So instead I go with um, I go with a messy look. I did not ask them to do things like, you know, just do that. I was like, you have two seconds, just move. But in your movement, putting a peak motion and then I'll capture that. So what we did is we have two we have two uh, strokes uh, on grid, gelled red on either side, and set up a stroboscopic mode, and a set up at, I think, one and a half stop or two stops, you know, lower than the main, the key light. Right. The key light is a, a little overhead. Uh -huh. So that's the one I time it for the, that's the one that we time it for the, for the peak motion. Right. Does that make sense? Yep, totally. So I, I wanna differentiate light output because the thing is sometimes I feel like a, the stroboscopic one can be really messy, you know, unless you do it perfectly well. Then, it, you know, but because I feel like it's not like when dancer they're moving, it's not like every moment is that the defining moment. So I want to differentiate the defining moment from the rest of movement. So I use the strobe, the key light to do that. And then use the other one to capture, you know, how he got into that. So basically you just did this random things. I said, don't even, over, don't think about it. So how did it turn out? I like it because I feel like it's like a painting. <laughs> just, mm -hmm. For, I mean, it's totally personal taste. I mean, some of you may think it's messy, but uh, you know, it, the, the point is we got to do what, what we wanted to do, right? What we love to do. <laughs> right, right, right. And that's just fascinating. Well, are, are those special lights that you get for the stroboscopic effect or are you using the pro photo lights to do that as well? I use, so depending on what lights you have, um, some can do it, some cannot, some doesn't have the setting, but you can always uh, use, uh, use the lights that can do it to optical slave trigger the lights cannot do it. So that, okay. yeah, it depends on brand. Okay, cool. Well, I know we have like that one other image of the dancer in pink. Let, let, let's go ahead and bring her up as well. Oh, okay. Um, this is just example about, you know, when you, she's young, she's 15. Um, I love working with her, Abby, Abigail Shoulder. Um, every time, every year she comes back, we do something different. I think another photo of her actually took the third place of the teen category. Um, so, so this is just example um, I want to share is like when you do things different, you can still do it in your regular shoot, you know, with your client and I just add it. For me, I, I like to add it to the end mm -hmm. so that we know that we get the, the typical ones out and that they are happy about it. And then this will be just a surprise, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. And then the leg is high. <laughs> so. <laughs> And is this using again uh, the snoot to uh, to light up the top of her leg and, and the side of her of her face? Right. So the background is a lit. Uh, I have a magenta. Yeah, I have a magenta gel. Mm -hmm. um, so the only light on her is the snoot. Um, but just. The reason I want to put it at the end because snoot is very picky. You have to be really, pre really precise. It only has this little bit of light. 
Uh-huh. So you, sometimes it doesn't hit the right way. Sometimes right. it does. So, you know, it's something that, oh, it's nice to have, but if you don't get it, it's also fine because you got the other shots, right? Right, right. Yeah, that's a, you know, the fascinating part of that, you just kind of experiment and, you know, and. Uh, yeah, so- I find if you experiment enough, um, then it's easy for you to put in um, doing your crime work. Yeah. Because you already know what you're going to do. Yeah. JL says this reminds him of the leg section of Lou Christensen's uh, Il Distrato. So interesting. <laughs> okay, go ahead and uh, unshare now and uh, we'll wrap up. Um, you know, I, I, I guess uh, uh, I, I just love this. You know, I love that, you know, because so often we talk about so many different things, but, you know, we went outside the box with so many different looks, you know, in, in these pictures that you uh, graciously shared with us today. Um, and I think it's really important for us to think about you know, because sometimes even as we photographers get caught up in, okay, what's the pose and what's the lighting for that pose? And I think it's interesting to say, okay, you know, yeah, what's the pose, but what else can we do besides what we ordinarily do? And that's exactly what you've been doing here with all these, with color, you know, with, you know, using the light, with uh, long exposures and you know, it, it, it's, um, it's, it's, it was just really fascinating to see what you're doing. Thank you. Um, what, do you have any, like, do you want to provide any final thoughts before we wrap up? Uh, my final thoughts is just, um, I find it's easier to be, I find that you have to be honest with yourself. What really motivates you? And what motivates me to do these things is just how I feel about dance. And, uh, and also I feel like um, how I, I feel like if I keep doing something different, then as a photographer, I can keep growing. Uh, it's really important um, because after all we, that, that's why I quit my job in, corporate, if I only just, business is very important, don't get me wrong, but if I only there to make money, then I should not have quit my corporate job because I was making good money. <laughs> so, so that's the thing is that creative growth is so important and that makes, keep me really interested in enjoying uh, doing my work. And also in terms of, I would say for me, finding inspiration um, is also very important. And I really try not to work, look at too much at dance photography in general. Not because people are not doing amazing work. People are doing amazing work. Um, but um, again, I'm trying to not be as influenced. Mm-hmm. Um, go, I, I always recommend go look at fine art photographers, things really abstract. And then if you like something, it doesn't even have to be photography and it could be a film or you know, movie. I always think about what I like about it artistically and, and then how would that apply to what I do? And that's fun. Yeah. You, you know, like we, we got to see your, um, your success pictures here today, but to get to your success pictures, um, is it fair to say that you failed a lot before, on, your, on your journey to, to, to get these artistic shots? It, um, yes, um, I, you know, every time, every time after, especially after those creative collaborations, mm-hmm. I got from looking at those photos, usually I, I would have a hard time going to bed that night because I'm like, oh, I should have done this. I should have done that. So I look at every photo, look at, you know, what I should have done. Um, some of those should have done, they are all, actually they are all valid. But then a few days later, when I look at it, some of them, I actually, I could let go because I already learned it. Mm-hmm. But then on the other hand, I feel like the photo itself, don't you think that sometimes we are very wrapped up in our photographer's head? We think 
right. this way the light should be this way yeah but it sometimes it doesn't have to be right so i also think that a few days later when i look at a photo i have a different perspective then i feel like oh i actually enjoyed the imperfection of it mm -hmm. because i feel like the somehow sometimes the so-called perfection is we we have such a, like this um I don't even know if it's, an, you know, because after all, it's, a, it's art. So people see it differently. But I, I would say, yeah, you know, there are lots of time things don't work out. And then recently, um, the collaborative shoot that I do, I produce less, like a few and a few photos, mm -hmm. because sometimes it would take us 45 minutes just to get it right. Not taking photo, not, not taking photo yet. Then we spend right. three, like a, then we spend um, like 10 minutes to take like, but once we get it right, set up right, then we just spend a 10 minutes and we, we got two shots. <laughs> That's fine. That is okay. Right. That is okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I think I'm just trying to say that like, as people, if, you know, there's going to be people who see this webinar and they're going to be inspired to try some new things. And I just want them to know that as you do these new things, it's, it's, you're going to fail. And that's, that's part of the journey, you know, when, when you're, when you're trying new things and then when you start nailing it, it's like, wow, this is really cool. And sometimes, right. and sometimes, you know, like, like you make a mistake and that turns out to be an incredible image, you, you know, like the mistake exactly. turns out to be what you didn't even know that you wanted it to be, but it is, you know, exactly. Totally. So, Okay, well, Jing Z, I really appreciate you being here with us today. Um, I really uh, love what you had to share with us. And thank you very much for being a part. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Thanks, everyone. thank you, everybody. And uh, we you. will catch you guys on the next one. Thank you.